गुड मॉर्निंग बांग्लादेश All right, good morning, Bangladesh, and what a fine morning! How can it not be the gentleman with the cravat and the what's that colour? You're not going to talk yet. Hang on, I haven't introduced you completely. Fantastic dress. We'll talk about that. But my special guest today is the man from down under. Ma- uh, 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 I've already forgotten everything. I'm just so nervous <laughs> because I've got such a big dress uh, from uh, Master Chef Australia, the, the celebrity judge. And actually, the reason he's here in Bangladesh is because he's the brand ambassador of mm, Rivoli Cookie, Matt Preston. Hi, how are you, Navid? Good morning, Bangladesh. Yes, good morning. And Kainat, you were supposed to play the theme music. You forgot. Uh, let's just, okay, fine. Never mind. The moment is gone. No worries. So, Matt, congr- uh, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. We we spent a bit of time together. You've been uh, Matt, you've been my my guide to Taka, so I've, I'm I'm indebted to you permanently for introducing me to why the potato is the most important thing in um, a Bangladeshi biryani and um, and introduced me to Bakkani. So thank you for that forever. Oh, not at all. My pleasure. How's your tummy holding up so far? Rock and roll. I'm 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 100. percent I'm bulletproof. I think there is. I think there have there have been moments when when people have got a bit twitchy when we you and I drank lassie together. Yeah. Um, but that that was all good. I I have I have a I have a I I've, I love my street food, but I've also I'm also mindful of the fact that coming from a, a very different place, that there are certain things I have to avoid. So uh, the, the the tea was delicious. Delicious. We had the TSC. That was fantastic. Yes. Yes. And that was uh, all good. In fact, that's the that's the picture that's gone uh, very really viral. And everybody's been asking, where did you get those wine glasses from? They thought we carried. <laughs> no, but they, everybody thought we'd been carrying the glasses. Well, you do, know it. You're, you're a very classy guy. You, I, you have a little little mahogany box. You open up. It's, <laughs> it's got gold hinges inside. You've got a selection of things. You've got a, a, a little silver bottle of hand sanitizer. You've got your two wine glasses. That's you're right. I do have the hand sanitizer. Yeah. Then, then, uh, then maybe what I should add is a, a pair of goblets next time. You know, like a silver oh, goblet. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, but, but but actually that was a bit of a surprise. I mean. Listeners, we actually went to TSC, and uh, many people were asking that where do, where did we get the wine glasses from? Because we drank shoda kotha tonge cha, and it's called the tong mm. uh, tong tong tea. So we had this tea, which is on Facebook on our page right now, and everybody thought that we actually took the glasses ourselves. But no, it was that the the vendor who actually got those glasses out of nowhere. Because yeah. I've never ever seen people drink you know desi tea. Uh, from a wine glass, but I think that was the moment. Did, didn't you love the energy over there? I, I loved it. I mean, you know, it was day, day before Independence Day. Yep. There were there were patriotic songs coming from that that area outside the TSC. Um, the, it was just so bustling and vibrant, and and just you know, a really the, the little doves of peace were were chanting their little doves of peace song. They'd obviously come in from the the country. I mean, that, that, that that's the exciting thing about being here. This place just pumps with energy, and you know, just the it's a it's such a vibrant city, and it's so, uh, again, an amazingly vibrant city for food, which is one of the reasons why I love being here. Oh yeah, and it is. And and the thing is that if you look at it this way, that there's when you go out, there's really nothing much to do mm. except for eat. So you eat, you eat, and you eat. And that's why you know we are. A, I mean, in general, we are a foodie people. Yeah, well, but I think that, that that's what's interesting. It's very similar to you know I've I've, I've sat there. Um, watching four or five <laughs> Dakarites discussing, arguing over the best biryani and getting very passionate about, you know, or about, uh, <laughs> about any of these different restaurants. Um, and, and I love that. that. That's exactly the sort of conversation I'd be having with my friends back in Melbourne if you came to visit me. Where are we going to take him? We can't take him here. We must take him there. So, so I think that, 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 that's a... And, you know, gee, it delivers when you go. I mean, there's a reason why that debate is because there's, there's so much good food here. It is. And, and you're right. This biryani debate, I think, was was the biggest debate debate on Facebook <laughs> as to which biryani because I mean it's one of those things that which one do you go to I mean we just have one shot with you mm. because there's still so much of food that you still didn't get a chance to eat but let me ask you one thing that we started you know we spent a good two days yeah. and I actually learned a lot from you also you know when you define food but there's one thing you mentioned and I think that just you know totally you know takes the cake no pun intended is when you talk about cookies or biscuit you know our culture is that we dunk biscuit in in tea and that's where the rivoli discussion came mm. and you had this very 
perfect definition that that is going to be soggy, but it's not going to break. Can you yeah, tell us? Yeah, that? well, I think. Look, I think. I mean, I, I come from a. I come from two different Duncan cultures. I was born in England. I live in Australia, and we love a dunk. We we love a cup of tea. It's a really kind of traditional <laughs> thing, and and a, and something sweet, specifically a biscuit, is a great thing. But but for me, the great the great biscuit it has to it has to suck up the tea without falling apart, because mm. otherwise you end up with a with a kind of slushy mess at the bottom. And 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 one of my first things I did when I when I tried I tried when I tried the Ruby biscuits was to do the three second rule where you take your you take your your biscuit and you you dunk it into your tea one two three take it out and then give it a little bit of a wobble mm. and, and if it drops down your sleeve you, you know that it's too soggy um and because you want it you want it to be kind of still holding together but but but, but absolutely saturated with tea because you get that lovely combination of sweetness and and the toastiness of of, of, of the cookie itself plus the meltiness of the chocolate because if it's a chocolate chip cookie that's the other advantage and also that lovely flavor of tea as well so now when you signed up as the as the brand ambassador of Rivoli was this one of your criteria that you actually wait a second I'm not going to sign up before it, it passes this uh, you know it's, you, you don't you don't want to be a brand ambassador to, to a biscuit company in a country that doesn't get biscuits and tea and obviously you know <laughs> Bangladesh is, is is a massive tea nation so that that's very important but also when someone rings you and says hey do you want to do you want to do you want to eat biscuits in Bangladesh you go yes well what could be wrong with that all right so uh, Matt uh, my guest is Matt Preston Master Chef Australia and your hashtag is what uh, Matt's cravat Matt's cravat M-A-T-T-S-C-R-A-V-A-T and you're here by way of Rivoli as the brand ambassador yeah. and uh, let's see you've got a terrific uh, cravat on and uh, have you put up the photo on the Facebook already it's already up mm -hmm. you can see the lovely combination that Matt's got on. We're going to take a short break. And Matt, you're going to be here, right? Yeah, sure. I'm hanging around for as long as you need me. Cool. Otherwise, we don't have a show. We take a short <laughs> break and uh, catch you later. All right. Good morning, Bangladesh. We are back with Matt Preston. Matt, so good to be, uh, that you're here. I know you've got a really busy schedule. Now, um, l l let me ask you one thing. Uh, what was I going to ask him? Forgot. Are you gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna apologize now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm gonna. You're apologize. You're gonna apologize for what happened when Bangladesh played India. You're gonna apologize for the fact that. Oh yeah, that that's if, right. That if Bangladesh had scored those two winning runs, Australia would be in the semi-finals. It wouldn't know, have been I been know. beaten by Kohli. It would have been a whole different deal. You could have done your great I friends know, across the sea a favor. I know, I know, I know. I mean, this is it's <sighs> one of those things. You know, what if, what if, what if? But, but yes. it's not what if. You, here you are. Here you are. You're, you, you've got an amazing cricket team at the moment who who gets a Bangla wash. Over, over New Zealand when they're here, and then look, I'm, 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 I'm gutted. I'm gutted. You've got an am a couple of amazing bowlers. Um, I don't know. You could. Well, you we could, had a couple of amazing anyway. bowlers. They're not bowling right now. <laughs> they're not getting a chance to bowl right oh, now. I, I, th I, you know, but the, but you think of the the performance of Mustafa Fakir, uh, Mustafa Fakir against um against New Zealand. That that was that was the the second highest wicket taken uh, wicket total ever taken. Yeah? yeah. But more importantly, the the highest total was against Ireland. That, I mean, Ireland. yeah, it was Ireland. It was against Ireland. One more wicket. So so to take that against against. I think argue the best one day one day in T20 team in the world at the moment. Amazing, amazing performance. So I see it from the outside as as a as, a, as an obsessive cricket fan who lives in a, a city obsessed with cricket. I think it, that's really exciting. I which, mean, which I think you saw as we were going around the city. Yeah, you saw in streets, little corners everywhere. Everybody's playing cricket. Well, everyone's playing cricket, and there is so much open space that every bit of open space is used for cricket. But everyone's wearing well, they're wearing they're wearing the shirts, you know, faded old, you know, yep. uh, the T20 one, one day shirts, and 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 it's great, you know, the the. Cricket is a fantastic way of expressing your um your, your love for your country. I think. Yeah, it is. It is. And uh, now let's let's just go back to the the uh, road trip we had, kind of for the couple of days. That um, the bazaar when we went to the bazaar. Remember yeah. in Mohammedpur. So uh, listeners, we actually went to the town hall bazaar in Mohammedpur. So we saw the saw the fish and everything. We just kind of what. But I saw when we went saw the vegetables. I love it. You lit up. Oh, it's a, it's a, you know you have this amazing soil here. You know it's like it's like it's like having gold across your across your plains and and the stuff that comes out of that soil and the vegetables particularly were and not only this amazing kind of 
um, range of vegetables and stuff I've never seen before, like like jute leaves, or I've never seen taro in its kind of in its full extent. We we have taro root, but it's old and dry, and this was this kind of bright living thing. The the core of banana palms. I mean, and and I did because I am the food nerd. I was like, it was it was like being in a candy store. I was I, so excited. I could tell. I, I really wanted to get in there and and cook, and I think that's I mean that's that, that's so exciting. You can't have a great cuisine without without great produce. It's a very simple rule. So, uh, being who you are, uh, is this, does something happen to you that when you, let's say, go because you travel a lot also, and every place has its own unique array of what's called food, and when you see that, does it does your mind start racing? Oh my God, yeah. we can do. Oh my God, we yeah. can do that. Yeah, right? Because I remember one thing you really got yeah, yeah. turned talk, on. Oh, the small potatoes. Use, uh, the small potatoes. Use, oh, the small potatoes. I'm sorry, it's bad, but no, small no, but, potatoes. But, but but and I've got this amazing feedback from from people from people here from followers on social media here saying, all right, what you must do is you must cut them in half and fry them and then toss them with a little bit of mustard oil and some green chili and um and and I've got we've got guys in England going and, and Australia going, where do you get these potatoes? Because it's like the the dream thing. So yeah, that they were particularly delicious. I just wanted to, I just wanted to steam them, but I also had a I had a a, a pocho made with um made with mashed potato. Uh, so so the with and and again mustard oil, which was delicious, and it brought back memories. It brought back memories for me of you know being a kid and scraping my my English mustard from the side of the plate onto my mash with my bangers and mash and that lovely kind of flavour. I mean, it's a you know. It, it, so was that the alu bharta, um, Farhana? Yeah. Was that yeah, alu bharta? Yeah. Yeah, Farhana is over here. She's the unsung hero, the lady who actually brought Matt Preston and the whole Rivoli over here. So she's uh, just scream hi. So hi. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. So she's sitting there. And we have Henry over here, the the lady who's actually has Mr. Mash, not Mash. I'm talking about mashed potatoes. Mr. <laughs> Mash on a leash over here. Uh, I, th I think you might have given me a new nickname. Hello. How uh, are you? Yeah, that's that's. Did we get her voice there? Yeah, mm. Henry. She's the she's the actual lady who's uh, keeping everything under. Actually, the the two ladies here are running the show. Oh, you I, and I are I, just you know being pimped. Basically. I I, I, I only I only <laughs> I only work with women. We're women of a fine. <laughs> Blokes just want to sit around, talk talk cricket, drink tea, eat biscuits. The women want to get things done, and I love that. And I know. I mean, um, the and it, it, it's interesting that you know how they say you know the, a nice a great voice, which you have, of course, you know the great. Yeah, but you know the fact that food itself is itself is such an attractive thing i mean i was there at the, at the event last night and not like, you were like like charlie you know of charlie of charlie's angels you know, all the <laughs> women were fluttering away i mean my wife i, I mean my wife was a stranger navid who are you oh i gotta go speak to me you were with like a, you were with all the most good looking women in town well well, well you know i'm I, I did feel i did feel like a like a flame surrounded by all these very glamorous butterflies that was um it was it was it was amazing but i, yeah, I think i think food people people love food and it's that whole you know it, it, there's something very sensual about food i think i mean it, it's very sexy it is yeah. and and speaking of sensual producer do we have time for the all right so how about this this is kind of impromptu that we've printed out a few of your recipes from the internet and you're known for your voice oh, my even my glasses fell off so um <laughs> known for your voice so how about this you read out one of your recipes in a very deep erotic voice okay and kind of uh, has picked out a music which is as close to erotic as we could get. You know, we are still a very conservative country, and reading out something erotic at 10 in the morning when am everybody's I, going to work is kind of what we have to play with. But let's give it a uh, shot. Am okay. I going to get into trouble here? You will not get into <laughs> trouble. Even if you do, in less than 24 hours, you're on a flight out of here. <laughs> exactly. We'll get the flag. But anyway, hey, let's go. You know, we, we, gotta, we need to uh, have fun. All right, so shall we start the music? All right. Last. It's an ugly, if rather greedily delicious word, but no other can describe the breathless adoration directed to this pudding. And why not? It's dark, mysterious, and like all great loves, balances the bitter with the sweet. Few things can match the joy of digging the first spoon out of that crust-topped chocolate sponge and finding a thick seam of dark, chocolatey sauce running like a rich crude underneath. Do you need to customize a chocolate self-sourcing pudding? Probably not. But you can always add frozen raspberries, cherries, orange zest and cinnamon, rum and raisins, and even a little chili. And don't forget those individual chocolate fondants which put the sauce inside the pudding. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last show of Good Morning Bangladesh. We might, we might get flagged and shut down. <laughs> no, that was brilliant. Absolutely. Let, yeah. let, let's take it back to talking business. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. The producer is giving us karate chops. She might be getting flagged. No, I'm just kidding. That was just absolutely brilliant. Maybe she needs to run to the bathroom right now. All right, fine. She has to take a commercial break. Brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant. And uh, listeners, you're listening to none other than Matt Preston, the man who's here on behalf of Rivoli Cookies. We take a short break and we come back. Matt, we're going to chit-chat with you. Good. Good morning, Bangladesh. Good morning, Bangladesh. Naveed Mahbub. My guest is uh, is uh, Ma- Ma- Preston, and we have a call from Mr. Bishujit. Hello. Hello. Yes, you have a question for Mr. Matt Preston. Hi, Matt. Hi. How are you? Hi. Fine, fine, and you? Very fantastic. Loving, loving my my time here in Dhaka. Uh, most welcome, and uh, thanks for your sexy voice, as Naveed mentioned. <laughs> are you doing all right? Uh, are you doing all right with that sexy voice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Okay. And I'd like to know one question, uh, one answer from you. You know that you are a very world famous, uh, um, uh, you know, jazz, okay, uh, yeah. in, in, the, in, the, in the program uh, that is called MasterChef Australia. So I would like to know one, one thing that have you been faced any, any cooking program as a contestant and also keen to know that what was the result? So have I been have I been pitched uh, any other cooking shows? No, rather that have you been on the other side of the fence that you have been judged on a show? Uh, I, I, you know what? The, the main place you get judged in Australia is on radio. And, and they used to do this the whole time. They'd, they, they'd, they'd blindfold me and they'd make me identify things by smell. And, I, and then I'd, I'd do, and it would be things like uh, petrol on a rag kind of thing. It was mm. like, and, and it got to the point where the last, the, the last one I did, and I, I, I now refuse to do them, the last one I did, I was given a, a closed box and I had to put my hand in and I had to identify yeah. a three-course meal. So a, a, a first course, and a main course, and a, and a dessert. The first course I went and it, I could feel eggplant, I could feel um, uh, brinjal, and I went, okay, that, that, that's an antipasto platter. And they went, yeah, that's right. And they started looking a bit suspicious. The next one, I put my hand in, and I felt that feeling of rice, you know, like mm. the, and, and, and chicken has a very quite, like, squidgy feel. And I went, okay, well, that's a chicken risotto. And they started looking, and they said, we're going to get you on the last one. And the last one, there was nothing in there, no dessert, just a chocolate bar. Ah. And I, I felt the top of the chocolate bar. Good morning, Bangladesh. Uh, these fingers are made for tasting. So after that, I I, I stop. I, I I write recipes though, and and really, when, once you start writing recipes, um, and people cook them with social media now, you get judged every time they cook the recipe. If they like it, they post a picture. If they don't like it, they send you an angry note. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bishuji, thank you so much for your question. And speaking of fingers, you said your fingers also can. Uh, sense you have a sixth sense in your fingers when we went to old Dhaka to have biryani and you chose to eat with your hands <laughs> and let's talk about that yeah okay uh, well you know look i'm i'm used to eating i'm used to eating my hands i'm used to, i'm used to eating slightly wetter food so it kind of sticks together but the biryani was was so light and fluffy um <laughs> when we got up to when we got up to leave i thought i'd done a really good job when we got up to leave i looked down at the floor your place totally clean my place looked like like someone was trying to sow rice in a paddy field <laughs> there was yeah. rice all over the ground and there were just a little a little matt preston shape where where the rice obviously landed on my legs and <laughs> fallen off so yeah i I, I have a bit more work to do, do doing that. But, you know, that's, I think that's the whole thing. The, the whole thing is that, you know, I, I love this idea of eating with the fingers. It's such, a, it's such a great engaging way, and it's become a really cool thing in, in top restaurants around the world to do, to eat the fingers because you, you engage. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, at El Bulli, in the, the most famous restaurant in the world, the restaurant called El Bulli, which has dominated the, the world culinary stage at the top level for, for 10 years, in, in the last few years, most of the dishes you ate were eaten with your hands. That's because because you get a direct connection, you get a direct connection to the food, and that, that's another thing about you know that's one of the things that I think is so interesting. I'm, got, I'm I am as you know a, a total biscuit nerd, and one of one of the first things that I noticed about about about, about, the, about the Rivoli cookies, especially the checkerboard cookie, that they use Belgian chocolate. So if you make a chocolate chip cookie, 
Normally, the chocolate is quite cheap and quite hard. But, but with, the, with the Rivoli, when you pick it up, you can feel the Belgian chocolate melting under your thumb with the heat of your body heat. Oh, wow. so, so you get this fantastic thing of the chocolate soft and yielding, it melts in your tongue, and the biscuit's really crispy. So I think that, and you only get that by quality ingredients, the best machinery, and kind of you know, bringing the same passion for food that, that everyone in, 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 in Bangladesh has and translating into wanting to do something. I love the, the reason why I'm involved with, the, with, 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 um, with Fahana and the guys uh, at Rivoli is because one very simple reason. I love this idea they want to make a Bangladeshi biscuit you can be proud of to replace imported biscuits. I think that's a fantastic thing to do. It's a kind of a statement of Bangladeshi pride. All right, um, that, that's 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 absolutely um, um, that's absolutely great. And um, um, uh, we have to go. Do we take. Oh, okay. So producers say, "Man, time flies, man. We're talking uh, with you. We, this time is you, you. But you and I spent two days and we didn't shut up. So it's not that, a surprise. That is true. You know, I was I was actually thinking, okay, you know, we'll be spending. It's like it's like it's almost like going on a blind date. You know, uh, we are we're three of us in a car all day. I mean, you know, I don't want to know what sort of blind dates and end up in you you being stuck with a person for two days. <laughs> Navid, I think. <laughs> all right, right, beep beep. Okay, so she's also doing karate chops. We got to take a short break before we, we before I spill more beans over here. So we're listening to Matt Preston, and we go for a commercial break. We come back. We have one more segment, and wish we could uh, have you here for another two hours. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. But a short commercial break. We come back in a couple of minutes. Good morning, Bangladesh. Good morning, Bangladesh. Navid Mahbub, my guest is uh, from Master Chef Australia, celebrity judge Matt Preston. Matt, you know time is flying. I just wish this would be a show till one o'clock. But um, you know we had Bakar Khani. Yeah. In uh, Lalbagh. Yeah. You see the Lalbagh Fort. But again, you know, we were entering the Lalbagh Fort, and I could tell your eyes were wandering <laughs> at all the eateries <laughs> across the street. Your program that way. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't help it. I, and, I, and it's, look, it, look, there's an element of being a greedy person. That, that has to be part of it. But it, I just, it, it's just this amazing opportunity to, um, to engage with a whole new world of food. Because, you know, even if it's something that sounds the same, It'll be some. It'll taste totally different, and and, and the bakakani are a great example of that. You know, I, I've eaten, I've eaten what I know, a hundred different breads around the world, and that was something totally unique because it's so flaky and so crispy and such a great recipe. And having them warm straight off the hook as they've been hooked out of the oven. <gasps> Delicious. In, in fact, that was the first for me too, because bakrakan is just like cookie. You just leave it in a in a container, just take it out and eat it. Mm. But this was the first time for me also. We were standing there, they got it out, and we had it hot. Now there was one interesting mm. happened. We tried to pay the guy, and he wouldn't take money. Remember? Yeah, no, yeah, it was very funny. And you I love that. you did a, a superb gesture there. It was almost like an exchange of. Exchange of crests. He gave you a bakrakani, and you gave him a rivoli. Well, yeah. Look, look. I, I, look, I, I had I had the I had this, the shoulder bag full of rivolis as, as I have had all the trip, and I just thought it was a nice idea to exchange something that was very traditionally kind of of Bangladesh and exchange it for something that's very new and modern from Bangladesh. And they both come from the same place of loving food. And I just thought that it was a nice kind of, it was a nice transition. And they were both, let's face it, they're both delicious. So, they're, uh, absolutely. You know, I, I, thought I get some of their world, they get some of my world. Exactly. I mean, we've, you've done this whole exchange. You went to Jago Foundation School. Yep. All the kids were thrilled to get a whole box of Rivoli. I mean, you've done this whole two days we were out on the street, but I thought that was the moment. It those uh, we filmed that uh, video, yeah. and I thought that just at every time summarized everything. It was it those few seconds were really worth a thousand words. You know, but exchanging the love of food, basically. Uh, but that, but that, but that, that is. I mean, food is one uh, something is often used to divide us, but actually, it's something that, that unites us. And and you know, wh when you start talking about what people love about food, and it's normally their mother's cooking, that is the same whether you're in, in Italy or Australia or, or here in here in Dhaka. It's the it's the same thing. Talk about talk about the food of home, and it's the food of the heart. Yes. Now. Um being who you are, um, let's say when you're flying, some people are very picky, especially if they're gourmet chefs <laughs> or if they're really into food, being a food critique <laughs> when they're flying, that they're, they say, you know, I'm not going to eat on the plane. George. What's your story? Well, look, look, when, I mean, 
George, Gary and I uh, often fly together. George will turn up with his own box of sandwiches made by his mum because <laughs> he doesn't like eating airline food. Gary will, Gary will eat everything. I I've learned to be selective, you know. Um, airline beef, not so good. But um, steamed stuff, delicious. So fish on the airline can be really, really good. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm, but, but uh, for me, I, I like to sleep. Uh, it's, a, it's a chance where the phone doesn't ring. So I like to just get on the plane, pull up that little blankie, you know, drop the seatbelt and just kind of, before the plane's taken off, just like that. Perfect. Oh, I've, and with that sexy voice. Now, um, so do, do you grab, grab a good meal before the flight then? Is that the case? Um, I, I, you know, I tend not to get hungry, hungry on the flight. I do normally, I do normally, I, I do normally like to have something sweet with me. Mm -hmm. Just there's normally that thing, you, you, you're watching a movie and you can't get the attention of, of anyone and so you grab something sweet. So, so there'll be normally, a, normally maybe, maybe a packet of biscuits or possibly a, a chocolate bar, just, you know, just to reassure me. All know? right, sounds good. And uh, we got about uh, 45 seconds seconds or 30 seconds one last question a big question everybody's asking matt you are you going to come back oh look look i mean i think i think i think we've got some some big plans for, for new variants so if they'll have me back i'd, I'd love to come back it's, i've had so much fun in the city and and, ha and uh, let's watch some let's sit down nice big mug of tea yes some Rivoli cookies yes. and watch some cricket together yes and, and it will be a, a truly great uniting moment between bangladesh and australia that's a deal, my friend, and that sounds like a plan. And Farhana, you're going to get him back? Yes, okay, she sure. said. For sure. All right, that's the sound like a plan. Well, Matt Preston, what a splendid, what a pleasure having you on the show. And uh, what? You she know? didn't sound very enthusiastic, did she? It was like, yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, no. maybe. Let's see how it goes. Okay, Farana, <laughs> let's, get, let's get an enthusiastic <laughs> scream. Scream, Jure. Yes, yes, Matt. Anytime. <laughs> well, that yes, yes sounded a little different. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, never mind. All right, we've come to the end of the show. And Matt Preston, thank you so much, my friend, for coming. You oh. have a busy schedule. Uh, but for coming here and wish you all the mm. best and I think this whole um, Rivoli and Matt Preston I think it's a match made in heaven mm. and it's a great cookie and mm. you're a terrific guy I have to tell you I mean you're you're big but you're such a wonderful person I think that makes uh, it uh, all all the difference having said that we've come to the end of the show good morning Bangladesh mm. has become almost good afternoon Bangladesh <laughs> because it's uh, only 11 o'clock but we really have to thank the unsung heroes uh, producer Kainat Khan at the controls yeah. Yeah, let's Yay. give her a huge round of applause. Our sound engineers are Apel and Loban. The yeah. uh, music Ooh. scheduler is uh, Mohan, who did a terrific job picking all the music, just uh, all the culinary music today, including that er erotic tune. No, actually, kind of, you chose that, sorry. Mm -hmm. And driver <laughs> Tohid, the man, the evil Knievel who drives me through, dra through Dhaka traffic, brings me to the studio in one piece. And I'm Naveed Mahbub. I'm going to see you tomorrow on Hum Day, which is Tuesday, right in the middle of the week. Till then, this is Naveed Mahbub and all the wonderful full team and uh, Matt Preston you want to say something goodbye yeah I, I want to say I want to say goodbye Bangladesh see you soon and Ravid thank you so much for showing me your beautiful city I've loved it thank oh, you so much thank you so much I'll come and see your beautiful city Melbourne maybe at the Melbourne Festival until then this is Navid Mahbub see you in 21 hour, 21 hours signing off good, 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 good morning Bangladesh